Hello everyone and welcome back uh, to ALO's Animation Assembly Attempt Part 2. In the last episode we uh, we set up the animator, we downloaded a model from Mixamo and a couple of animations and I set up the walk and turn and then I was trying to get the crouch animations going so that is where we left off. I was trying to set up as we can see here in the animator so I've got my crouches I'm just making the transitions so that uh, you go from crouching to crouch turning, crouch walking, and crouch right turning. And I was trying to have it set up so that a C, you could just toggle crouching on and off at C. So we shall see ha, 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 how we get on with this. Uh, ooh, I should have opened this before I started recording, but I didn't. I'm very well prepared today. Um, see, the thing is, I don't know when I'm going to get time to record these because... I still have work to do, and I don't know what time I'm going to wake up at. Uh, I don't know what's going to be going on in the house with, um, you know, people doing stuff and causing noise. That wouldn't be great for recording. So I kind of get these done when I can. I'm still endeavouring to... I set myself a goal to do a video a day, uh, and it will still be a long time. If I, if I keep to that, it'll be a long time before we catch up on everything, because... I have a lot more videos that I need to get through uh, and then we'll get on to the live stuff with me actually recording and working at the same time. Which I think will be a lot more fun because I can explain a lot better than me actually looking at videos of something I've done months ago uh, and trying to explain what I do and remember uh, what I'm doing. So this is the code that we saw in the last video. So uh, if you press C and crouching is true, then you will start doing the normal stuff. The normal walk. If you press C and crouching is false, then you will start doing the crouch movements. Uh, I don't know if I get to blend trees in this video. I know I do do them in another assignment. So blend trees are an easier way to transition between animations. Uh, and it makes it a lot kind of... It makes your character and your animations look a lot better, but it also makes looking at the animator easier. So you don't have all these crazy lines going everywhere that can be difficult to, to follow. And it's relatively easy to do once you get the hang of it. Again, same as everything. When you get the hang of it, it's it's fairly easy. Repetition is, is kind of your best friend with this kind of stuff. Um, so we're looking at the code. I'm looking at the code. Uh, so... Yeah, so I'm going to have to set it up basically for every keystroke. So every input that I have here... I'm going to have to put in a crouching boolean because if it's if if you are crouching then you want to play the crouching animation and if when you press that key so a d w or the arrows uh, and if you're not crouching then you want to play obviously the non crouching animations for the same keys so you can use the same keys for both uh, uh it's very simple to do just adding in a boolean so if crouching is true so if i pressed c and gone into my crouch mode then when i press uh the D button or the right arrow, I will crouch walk right. I'll play that animation. Otherwise, so if crouching is false, uh, we will play the normal walk animation, which is this one here. Uh, turn right animation. And then I got to do that for everything. So doing this kind of thing makes it look like it's a massive script with loads of code. Um, but it's all the same code, really. I'm just changing which buttons I press and which animation. But the kind of the idea behind it is all the same. Press this button, play this animation. Press this button, uh, crouch. Press this button, play this animation. If crouching is true, play this one. If it's not true, play this one. Uh, and it's nice and easy to read, I think. So we're just going to add this in. Uh, I'm going to just scrub through it just to, to get through this a little bit quicker because uh, it's literally all the same. I'm just going to set bools. Uh, so if you're crouching, you're going to play these bools. You're going to set these bools to true. So I walk, I turn, I turn, I walk, I idle. I do all that. I press C, I'm crouching, and now I'm crouch moving forward. I'm crouch turning left. Uh, I have put in, I've pressed the right button, but he's still turning left. Uh, 
which is interesting. Uh, so we got to find that. So the right, turning right didn't work. Uh, so, key code A. Come on, go back to where the necessary thing was. So D worked. Uh, if player get key, if player get key A, key code left arrow, if is crouching is, tr if crouching is true. So it never. Oh, I think I see the issue. Um, I'm never setting crouch walk to false. Think that's the issue so uh, the only way it would go back to from crouch left to crouch walking is when crouch left turn is false and it can't get from the left turn to the right turn it has to go through crouch walk uh, so crouch walk left is false yeah so it's never becoming false so because I'm adding these in I didn't need it before I added the crouch stuff in because if I was pressing D it it was turning right and then if I wasn't pressing D it was going to go back to, to idle uh, so it was only turning right if D was pressed now I'm saying if D is pressed and crouching so uh, if you're crouching and D is pressed you're turning right otherwise you're just you're crouched turning right otherwise you're just turning right but I'm never actually saying that you're never that crouch turning right is not is never false is ever false if that makes sense, I'm never transitioning back into the crouched idle state. Uh, so, I just need to add a little bit more lines of code. Uh, which would be, so I'd say get button up would be the way to go. So if I release the D key or the right arrow, then we're going to say that crouched walking right is false. And that means that as soon as I release the D key, uh, it'll transition back to crouch, uh, da, 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 crouch walking, crouch idle, crouch walking. Ah. So I'm getting there, slowly but surely. Um, and as I said, this is kind of the first big introduction to um, the animator within Unity that we've had in college. I'd messed around with it a little bit for some very basic stuff, but I never went this in depth with this many animations on one model before. Uh, so, uh, da, 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 da. so then you set that to false, and that should faults that should. Uh, transition him back to the crouch idle, which means that then I can go from idle to turning uh, right, left, left, right. Where am I going? If D is right, uh, key code A is left. There we go, yeah. I know my right from my left. Shut up, you. you just make the little L. That means left. I'm kidding. Kidding. Or am I? Um, so now we're going to test it again. So crouch. You know, crouching is working. I turn right. Now, I don't know why I tried turning right first, because um, I fixed the left turn. Oh, right. No, left turn is work. OK. No, I fixed the right turn, didn't I? I didn't fix the left turn. What did I fix? Oh, maybe I fixed it all. It seems to be working. Crouch. Turn right. Uh, so what did I fix? Like I said, walking right is false. Uh, so I didn't actually do it for, for walking left. Uh, if key could, if key up, get key off. So if you, if you release either of these, then you're no longer uh, crouch walking right. That seems okay. Uh, and all this is happening if crouching is true. So if crouching is not true, it doesn't even bother trying to get these lines of code. So oh, but I got rid of them. 
No, I think it was... Okay. Oh, no. I don't think I should have put that there. But you know what? We'll see what this does. Uh, we can walk forward. We can turn right. Uh, and it never stops. Uh, is turning right? Yeah. See, yeah, no. Crouch walking right. Uh, hmm. Yeah, no, I, I definitely think this should have been left in the if crouching uh, is true section uh, because otherwise if crouching is not true so it's going to try and run this code uh, whether crouching is true or not which means that you it, and, and it's setting the the crouch walk right to false so even if you're standing up and you release the a key it's going to try and set it's going to be false anyway so it's, i don't think it's going to make much of a difference but just for clarity, I think I would have to have that there where it was and then put in lines of code basically to turn all these bools false uh, on the release of the keys because now I have the same keys for two different states. Uh, and again, this is why blend trees are a little bit handier because I know in my third person project, I had to have two blend trees. One was for an unarmed animation and one was for an armed animation. Uh, and obviously they were all using the same buttons for movement, but I could just switch between the blend trees. So then uh, it never actually had to go through that tree that you saw there with So, you know, made it easier. We'll, and you'll see that it's hard to explain without it on the screen. So you'll see it when we get to that uh, section in my sci-fi RPG. Which I don't know what I'm going to call, because I still don't have a name for the actual game project itself. I just have it called Sci-Fi RPG. So if you have any suggestions for a third-person Sci-Fi RPG um, kind of action game, uh, comment below with your suggestions. Um, names are hard. Names are hard. I bought a game. I say I bought a game. Uh, a friend of mine bought me a game called Game Dev Tycoon which I think is brilliant, uh, and obviously right up my alley. But there is an achievement, a Steam achievement, for uh, when you are when you make a game, you have to name the game, and there's an achievement for staring at the uh, the naming screen for, uh, I don't know how long it is, but for, you know, a couple of minutes. Uh, the achievement's called Rider's Block, I think, and it's just like names are hard. And they are. What do you call them? Um, so maybe I'll do a let's play of that sometime just to show you what that's like because it is kind of cool. Um, and you can come up with some pretty fun names. I came up with some pretty dirty ones because that's me. It's my sense of humor. I also came up with some that were kind of piss takes on games that already exist. Uh, I think the best thing that I did in terms of just how it turned out because you, you just pick the things that you want in the game. Uh, it's a very basic game, game, game dev tycoon. It's quite basic, but it is a lot of fun. Um, so you're just selecting the things that you want in the game and the kind of the genres and all that, uh, and it will give your game a rating and determine how much money it made based on what selections you choose and how well they go together. Uh, I did one called Fall In 76, and it lost 2 million. It was one of the worst games I'd made. And I just thought, because this was during the whole Fallout 76 uh, scandals and all that kind of stuff and, and everyone hating on it and it getting terrible reviews. I just thought it was so funny that when I did the piss take of it, Fallout 76, that it lost $2 million and was the worst game. Got like 2 out of 10. It was, I mean, I thought it was very funny. Quite apt. But... um. Have we figured anything out? Player animal set build certainly up is true. So if crouching is true and input.get 
key up. Okay, so I've changed it a little bit. So if you're crouching and you release the keys, then that's when you set it to false. Otherwise, uh, your setting build is turning right to false. Right, so I, I've kind of separated them out. So if you're crouching, uh, if you press D and you're crouching, you crouch, turn right. Otherwise, if you're pressing D and you're not crouching, you just turn right. If you're crouching and you release the D key, or the right arrow, you stop, crouch, turning right. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you're not crouching and you release the, the D key or the right arrow, uh, this seems better. This seems like it should work. This seems to make more sense. Uh, logically, you can kind of follow it through of, of how it works. Uh, and that's the good thing about if statements and if else statements. Um, if this is true, you'll do this. If this is not true, uh, otherwise, that's what the else is, is if this is not true, uh, you're doing this. Uh, so it should work. I think that'll still work using the ands, because you're saying, uh, we'll see. Uh, we shall see. So I can walk and I stop walking. Uh, I can. What am I going to do? I'm going to walk. Okay. I'm going to crouch. I'm going to crouch left and I stop. But crouch left. I crouch walk. I crouch right turn. Crouch walk. So you can see it, it's working. It's all. It's stopping. Um, so that seemed to work. I don't know if at the end I was holding down the walk button or I just released the walk button and it kept going. Uh, yeah, crouch walk is false. I might not have that set up. I'm guessing if I'm looking at that, then that I it I had released the up arrow or W key and he was still walking off into the distance, running away from me. Well, crouch walking away from me. Trying to sneak away, you fucker. Even the creations that I build try and leave. Um, Boo-hoo. So... Uh, then I will need to uh, basically copy this idea of code for the walking forward, so the W and up arrows. If you're pressing them, uh, same thing. Uh, and you can collapse these down. So every function you make, you can collapse down. So that when you have a really long movement function and your co code looks really... Uh, like you have to scroll through loads to get to other bits, you can just collapse it down. Once you know this works, you can collapse it down, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, it makes this whole thing easier to look at and then you can go on and do whatever else you need to do in your script. Uh, I quite like getting my functions done and then collapsing them down and just having them all neatly there because uh, when I, once I collapse them down I know that they're working and I don't need to worry about them anymore and it is quite a nice feeling to just collapse them down and go okay that's done that's done and dusted uh, and if you need to go back to it you just you know uncollapse it uh, do what you need to do make sure it works test it and then collapse it again. Just a way to be nice and, and neat and keep your work looking cool. Well, not cool, but you know, it's just a little sense of accomplishment, especially for bigger scripts as well, when you have loads of functions. Uh, and for a beginner like me, where it's like, um, I can't believe I, I, I wrote all this stuff and it all, it's all working. If it's collapsed down, it means it's working. It's great. Uh, and finally, I'm not having problems with it or I have to keep going back and forward. Uh, so player anim dot set boo uh, is crouch walking crouch walk. So if you press the W key and you're crouching, you're gonna start walking. Otherwise, so if you're not crouching, you're gonna normal walk. Uh, otherwise, if you're not crouching, if input, uh -huh, I think I should still have the if input dot get key up. I really should have just copied exactly what worked for the, the left and right turn. So he walks and he stops. He crouches, he walks and he stops. He walks and he stops. Okay, well, I mean, it worked. And if it works, it works. So, yeah. That's the thing with builds is that you do have to uh, make sure that they are setting correctly if you set the... I mean, usually if you're using an if statement to, say, to set it to true, then uh, if you... The other outcome, the only other outcome it could be is false. So it should automatically set it to false. Um, but sometimes it doesn't work. And there's probably reasons for that, that I, I'm just doing something silly like I did here. I feel like I've deleted a curly bracket. It's drawn up all kinds of 
need to put that back in, make sure, just tidy up my code. And then once all this is done, I can collapse it down and never have to worry about it again. <gasps> in theory, until I add something else into it, but we're not adding anything else into this, because uh, this is just my animator assembly attempt. This is just the test um, and practice for what I was learning in college. Uh, we did, so this, I kind of went further with this in class. We started this out and we did like walk forward and turn um, and that was kind of it. Walk forward and turn was basically what we got through in class. Um, and we all did it and we all set it up and we all got it to work and the teacher went around and if anyone had problems, he would answer the questions. So then I brought this home and I decided just to expand on it a little bit and try and get more to work so that I could practice what I've learned and then go, go ahead a little bit because that's what I do. I like to, to move on. Um, I'm already planning some of the live stuff that we'll be getting to because... I will need to um, finish the final build of the sci-fi RPG. Uh, names below, suggestions, please. Um, and I've got so much that I want to do and so much that I've got left to do, so I'm going to have to make a list. So when we get to that video, I will be making a list, uh, which I have said. I'm not very good at making lists, but uh, considering the time constraints and the amount that I have to do, and the fact that it's me and I know that I'm just going to like start throwing more shit in and, and make it more difficult for myself, I have to make a list and try and stick to it. Uh, just to get something done for the deadline, and then I can work on the rest of the stuff that I want afterwards. I mean, there's no reason that I can't continue on with this uh, project when I get to it. So I think I'm going to check when this is over. Um, I'm going to check that. Oh, hang on. I'm going to pause this here. Edit, edit. Okay, sorry about that. There was a knock at the door. So, had to go. So, we're back on Mixamo. Uh, I don't remember what I was saying before I left. Um, oh, there you go. Sure, it wasn't overly. Uh, important. Clearly wasn't if I don't remember. So now we're downloading some walk backwards animations and this will take a while and crouch walking backwards. So we're going to add these in. Uh, once they download, bring them in into Unity uh, and now try and make some space in my animator component. animator controller not component so we're going to make a walk back walk back state um, we're going to try and slot it in somewhere oh there it is um, and you'll see what i mean that uh the more you add to this just kind of the crazier it gets and kind of hard to follow um so we're going to need more Parameters, another bool is walking backwards. I would assume, so you want to be able to go from idle to backwards. You'd also like to be able to go from walking, well, I suppose you could go from walking to transition back to idle and then go to backwards. Um, one would hope. I mean, you could just go, but I mean, if you try to go from there and then you'd want to say, well, or left turn to back, I mean, do you want to be able to go from every state to uh, walking backwards? You have lines everywhere and you'd never be able to follow what the f was going on. Uh, so we shall start with just from going from idle. Uh, set up the exact same way as all the other ones. You make some turns. Oh, I am doing it from everything, am I? Oh, no. No. So you don't want an exit time, so you just got to right-click on your the state you want to make a transition from, and then click on the one that, uh, click on make transition, and you'll get a little one of these lines connected to your mouse cursor. Click on the transition, or the state you want to make a transition to, and you'll get this little arrow with a line on it. You can click on it, and then you can ha turn off exit time for the ones you don't want uh, the anim animation to finish. So, uh, like on a jump, you would want exit time because you don't want another animation to kick in in the middle of a jump animation well maybe you do that would be uh, a design choice but um usually no 
So I'm going to create this weird kind of diamond thing, which will be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, all the same way, set up the bools correctly. So um, for this one, if his turning right is false uh, and his walking backwards is true, then you're going to start walking backwards. So you can see a lot of parameters, a lot of different states, and a lot of arrows and lines kind of going all over the place. It can be kind of daunting uh, and difficult to follow your first time. So, uh, but just bear with it because once you get the hang of it, it is uh, it is quite easy. Um, if a little kind of time consuming and tedious trying to get all this. Uh, but I found that at this stage, after having done the first like two or three, this was almost done. The rest of it was almost done on autopilot. I was just going click, 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 click. And you kind of zone out and go kind of zen about it and, and just kind of get in the zone and get it done. So it's, it's not that bad. It's not as bad as it sounds. It's not as bad as it looks. Uh, or at least I didn't find it was. But I guess it's not for everybody, really. Everybody has their own kind of area of interest within game dev um, and each area has its own kind of positives and negatives and bits that are fun and bits that are tedious uh, if input dot get key key code s um we're gonna walk backwards oh what's going on there Is this no? That seems these are not lining up. If yeah. oh, that was why I didn't have the uh... yeah, I didn't have the second bracket, so it didn't realize that this if statement was finished. I do get that. Yeah, sometimes when there's two brackets beside each other, I get confused because you got to close these brackets and then you got to close these brackets. Um, but when this closed bracket kind of has to come straight after this closed bracket, I get confused. Uh, so again, there should be another closed bracket there. So we're going to set up some, some reverse, reverse movement. Uh, so if is crouching is false, you're going to just walk backwards. And if crouching is true, you're going to crouch walk backwards. Uh, and again, same code as everything else. Just change the the keys that you press and the bool that you access in the animator. The animator. Uh, ba -bum. That should be fine. Turn my phone on silent again. Um, I'm waiting on something for the, from our group project to be uploaded so that I can uh, do some work on that as well. So I'm just going to keep an eye on the phone. Um, but I won't be texting today. Hopefully. Famous last words, really, I think. I won't be texting. Let's take my phone out and text. Um, and hopefully when I'm doing the title card for this, I can actually spell assembly correctly this time. And having said that, now that I've said it, I will probably spell it worse. I did notice that it was spelt wrong, but I didn't notice until I was uploading the video to YouTube. And I contemplated cancelling the upload and fixing it. But that would have meant going into Photoshop and just adding in that second S and then going back into Premiere Pro, replacing the title card with the corrected one. It would only take two seconds. That's fine. Not a problem. Then I would have to re-export the entire video, which takes about an hour, and then start the upload again. And the upload itself to, to YouTube takes about an hour. So it would have been two hours work. Well, two hours of waiting, not two hours of work. Uh, would have been another two hours before the video got up onto YouTube. And that just seemed like a little bit too much just to add in one S. So I left it out. I know, I know. You can comment on that video and call me stupid. You can call me stupid and leave out the S if you want. Uh, or call me stupid with two S's. Just to remind me. So 
stupid. Assembly. I'm blaming the, uh, I was going to say lack of sleep, but I think it's just the, just the craziness of, of what's going on right now. Uh, my brain is kind of fried, which I was talking about in the last video. I'm just trying so hard to keep busy so that I don't have time to dwell on what's going on in the world. And, um, you know, the fact that I get, don't get to go out and see my friends and all that kind of stuff, being stuck at home. Um, so I'm trying to keep myself as busy as possible. Uh, and I feel like... I've been doing such a good job of that that I'm starting to burn my brain out a little bit because I keep jumping from one thing to the next and trying to get, just trying to, like, you know, not give myself any time to dwell on what's going on. So, uh, yes, we downloaded some new animations. We need to make sure that they're all humanoid um, and that they have loop, uh, loop time on because we want the walk back to have loop, loop-de-loops. Um, and again, all of this movement is done using the root motion of the animation itself. I'm not moving it through code yet. Uh, and since this is the last video in this series, before we jump onto something more interesting and, and fun, uh, I doubt I will be using code to move the character. But he walks backwards, he can rotate, he can crouch, he can crouch walk backwards and look like he's grabbing some of the boobs. Oh well, I mean... <laughs> Uh, maybe very strange boobs if they were but hey I'm not gonna I'm not gonna shame anybody for their body shape everybody's beautiful even if I mean some people would like that you know just be a very different type of motorboat and I'm gonna stop talking about boobs now because uh just because I think it's a good idea not to talk about them. Who please? Well, tits. I can't stop now. They're just that's all that's on my mind right now. Boobs. Boop boop. Boop boop ba doop. Betty boob. Would have been a very different cartoon character. Um stop talking about boobs. How do you feel about boobs? Comment below. Hit that like button for more boobtastic content. Okay, I'm actually going to stop talking about boobs. Boob. See, there's no one here. There's no one here to stop me. I'm talking to myself. Oh, oh no. I'm gonna blame the Red Bull and the fact that I'm going crazy. Well, so. Yeah, okay, delete that, the position vector 3 thing, that wasn't doing anything. Am I going to paste it in somewhere? It doesn't do anything. Um, so I could just delete that, delete that, they're not doing anything at all. That is not the correct way to do it, I don't think. I mean, maybe it is. Who knows at this stage? Because I sure as shit don't. Um, so now he's not walking. He's moving, but he's not walking. Oh, I turned root motion off, haven't I? I missed that. We're talking about boobs. See, this is what happened. Oh yeah, there it is. Apply root motion. I have taken it off. So none of these animations are going to cause the character to move. They'll just do their animations and he will stay in place and animate. Um, so I am actually in this video going to try and get it to move by code. And I was right in saying that this is not the right way to, not that, this, where is it? Where did I put it? There, this is not the right way to um, move an object. Uh, uh, and again, this is just another situation of knowing the words, not knowing what order to put them in or exactly how they all go together. Um, this is not going to work. Game object to transform to position. Uh, what I could do, because I can't say that position is equal to this, which is equal to this. Uh, I can't do that. And this is not a, a thing. Yeah, game object to transform to position. New vector here. No. What I could do is delete this. Delete the position. And say that the game object transform to position is equal to a new vector 3, which is 0, 0. Uh, and then, I mean, I guess I could pass in speed there. And I think it should be speed by time dot delta time within the bracket as opposed to that outside the bracket, 
or I could just say like one on the z-axis and multiply that by speed by time by delta time because the speed is 10. Um, so I need to pass something in. Uh, pause is equal to game. No, this is so no. I hate trying to move things. I feel like in every project I've done, when it comes to coding movement, I always get it wrong. And I don't know why. That annoys me. Oh, that's just... What the... No. No, that's not going to work. Like, I know that this is not a thing. This is not a thing. I think the reason I was... You don't use coding brackets like this. I think the reason I was trying it is that uh, when you look at this, it, it looks like they're curly... Uh, maybe it's just my screen. I don't know. Sometimes it looks like they're curly brackets. I think it said like curly brackets when it said get set, so I was trying to say get the pause, set the new thing. No, this is not a this is not a line of code. This is gibberish. Um, if you're new to code and it all looks like gibberish, I understand. It Some of it still does to me, uh, but this is definitely gibberish. Doesn't do anything. Uh, correct words again, um, just not the right implementation. So vector three pause is equal to the game object's transformed up position. Pause is equal to a new vector three. You need a semicolon there. Okay. Um, okay. And then what? And then transformed up position. What am I going to try and do now? What am I going to try and do now? I'm going to transform up position. So there's a thing that still confuses me with code, uh, and I see it in tutorials and stuff and online uh, courses that I have uh, enrolled in on Udemy, and it's like, and it, it's this kind of thing where you're saying, okay, well we're gonna we're gonna create this thing, we're gonna set it here, so we're gonna like vector three pause is equal to this, pause is equal to this, and then this is equal to pause. So that it's like three lines of code where you're you're creating a variable, setting a variable, and then kind of resetting a variable, uh, and it just confuses the hell out of me. And I'm like, what? Like, it's that's equal to that is equal to what? No, that doesn't. No, it's. I mean, what? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that just uh, baffles me. But that's just something that I haven't had to use a lot. Uh, well, maybe I could have used it at some stage. Uh, it's not something I have used a lot, which means I haven't had the practice to figure out exactly what to do. To do. Uh, yeah. I do have a lot of Udemy courses that I, I still need to work through. Um, and I bought another one today, but not for game dev. I bought one to teach me how to play the piano. And I only got it today, so I haven't actually done any work on it. So I mean, I know a little bit. Because uh, I did get piano lessons years ago and found that it was really, really hard. Kind of gave up. Which is uh, not a lesson that you want to teach people. When things get tough, don't give up. Because uh, if I had kept at it by now, I could have been able to play the piano. And then I could actually use this to kind of make my own soundtracks, uh, downloads like sound effecty things for Reaper or other uh, digital audio workstations and do my own little sound effecty things. Um, yeah, but you know, 32 is not too late to learn the piano, is it? Shit, am I 32? I think I am. Balls. 32. When did that happen? Shit. Well, there you go. Time is getting away from me. Time dot delta time is getting away from me. Uh, I feel like past me has crashed. Uh, definitely looking up how to get this. Pause is equal to new vector 300 zero, zero, speed by time dot time. No, no, no. Okay, well, you go look it up and see if you can figure it out because. I think it's got to be like transform dot translate, uh, a new vector three, and then pass in zero zero, and put in some value for the z. You can put in speed, multiply by time, but delta time. Close your brackets. Um, okay, okay. Well, I mean, that's one way to do it, I guess, because we've it's basically the same as writing this in there instead of pause. So we said pause is equal to that. So it should, he should move forward. 
and you should move forward. <laughs> but will he? Yeah, will he? <laughs> he does, he does, he does. Um, he does, he just moves pretty quickly. Uh, so that did work. Uh, but as you can see, he's kind of floating forward uh, and then moving, and that's because his movement is not like it's too fast for the animation. So this is where you'll have to tweak movement speed. If you're not going to use root motion, you're going to have to tweak your movement speed so that it lines up with the animation itself. Um, and I think that looked a little bit better, but I'm too far away to go for it. Uh, yeah, it was just a little casual stroll. A little casual stroll. It's not perfect. That annoys me. Uh, 1.99. Put it at 2. Uh, put it at 2. Come on. There you go. 1.99 was pretty good. Walking. Yeah. Walking. A little bit of a, a jerky stop. But he moves. Bum, bum. She moves. She moves. Uh, so there you go. So the speed will be 2. That's good to know. Um, then I will need to do a similar line of code for rotation for the, the turning right and turning left. And then I can basically copy all that uh, and use it for, again, just add those lines of code into the player mode. But as you can see, rotate speed. So I'm actually doing that now. Uh, ba -ba. Uh, still no word on the upload. OK, that's cool. Uh, we're getting close to the end of this vidja anyway. So by the time this is over, the upload should be done and I can get that work done and get it out of the way. And that's another thing off my list. I've got, I've got a very, very long list of stuff to do. Yep. Keep this beside my computer to make my to-do lists. And it's blank because I don't make to-do lists. I did make a to-do list before. Uh, the very top of my to-do list, the very first one was everything. Uh, I feel like the top of my to-do list should be write to-do list. Uh, and then figure out what to do. Uh, da, da, da. So we're going to try transform.rotate a new vector 3. Let's see how this works. We're going to have to rotate it around the... Interesting. Uh, and set Z to 0. Okay. And, um, well, I mean, I just put in Z anyway as zero, but that was interesting that it, it there was a, an option there to just put in an X and a Y value and leave the Z at zero. Um, so, that's going to rotate right. I'm going to do the same thing for rotating left. Uh, this works. These lines of code will also work for the crouch. Uh, you just add them in, copy and paste them in. Uh, and same thing with the walking forward one. And then you just copy the walking forward one and put the negative speed to make them walk backwards. Um, so I might actually get the whole thing. That's actually kind of cool that I got the animator set up assembled, if you will, um, and then managed to code it all so that it, it is not using root motion. So we saw it work with root motion. Um, so I had it coded that when you press the buttons, uh, the player would move based on the animation's root motion. So that's one way of moving a character. Uh, and now I've turned root motion off and I'm coding it to just move um, with code by transform.translate and transform.rotate. Another way, um, both equally valid, um, I guess. I mean, I guess. I don't know. So there you go. Transform dot negative pause. Transform dot translate negative pause. So that's to, to move backwards because we set pause to be uh, a vector three that had uh, the speed value in it. So negative pause would just be the vector three with the negative speed. Should be. Walk forward. Uh, he rotates very slowly, so I just need to tweak the rotate speed. But he does rotate, and he walks backwards. All through code, no root motion. Yeah, um, pretty cool. Again, you just tweak the values until you get it, the feel that you want. Uh, 
so then you can so two is a good value for him walking forward and backwards and maybe we'd use 1.5 or 1 for the crouching if you want him to move slower uh, that's up to testing and you know your own what you want your game to feel like and the movement to feel like do you want it to be kind of sluggish or do you want it to be really quick and actiony and you know uh, there is no correct answer uh, whatever works for you and whatever matches up with the uh, animation um, I guess I guess I guess so it's still playing I'm doing something what am I doing I'm looking at the character for why for I just want to walk for more just see oh I tweaked a hundred rotate speed that looks better I'm gonna crouch and he still walks, he walks backwards, turns. So we got it all working there. And he stands up. You can turn crouch on and off. The shift W run. So I need a run speed for that, for shift W. Uh, which might be, you know, four or five, maybe. I don't think 10. I think 10 would be too much. 10 was what it was originally, wasn't it? And he zoomed off. Um, Okay, I don't know why I'm still... Where's the player gone? Come on, Halo. Come on. Go find him again. I think I'm going to put it in here. A run speed. Another float. Serialize the field. Run, Forrest, run. So for, yep, run speed. So I just default that to 10, because why not? It's a nice round value. Uh, and because it's a serialized field, which I love, I can tweak it here. Screw you, teacher that doesn't like serialized fields. Uh, we love, here at this channel, we love our serialized fields. Oh, that's even still too slow. That's... I mean, you could probably slow down the animation as well, but no, so that's true. A hundred? That seems quite a lot. Uh, um, it's playing the run animation, but he's not going that quickly. He's still going because his walking is still true. You're never setting his walking to false. I'm just going to ramp it up, see if I can get him to. Fly. Nope. He's still walking at the same speed, or running at the same speed. Which, if I had to guess, I would say it's because uh, it looked like the two bulls were true at the same time. Uh, so... Uh, if, uh, yeah, so if that, then you're gonna... Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't be using pause. Maybe I should set up an, a separate vector three. I don't know. Are there any um, experienced programmers out there watching this that know what I should be doing, the correct way to do it? Please comment below. It's, it, it'll help me learn. Uh, and that's, you know, that's what this is all about. I want to learn. That's why I'm doing all this kind of stuff. And I think it would be great if we could build a community where we all help each other and we learn together and we, you know, run things by each other and ask for help when we need it and give help and just be nice and friendly. I think that's, you know, what the world needs is more, you know, friendly groups of people, like-minded people getting together and, and we could create something beautiful. Oh, he's gone. Where'd he go? So he zipped off there. Uh... So I just, yeah, I just did a, a just a transform, tra translate, uh, yeah, multiply by time, but delta time, that's a good thing, just smooth it out, slow it down a little bit, because he just zipped off. Come on, come that's, that, that is a line of code. That's well done. I don't know what I do sometimes. Okay. Now, run. Better. Uh, there's still a bit of jankiness between... I 
think it's because he's going from the walk to the run. Um, maybe I should have just go from idle to run. Um, that would make it possibly a little bit smoother. Uh, oh, well, I've got the run to idle. And you do kind of want to be able to go from running to walking. You don't want to have to stop and then start walking. Um, this is why Blend Trees are better. And when we get to Blend Trees, and we will, you'll see what I mean. Uh, uh, they use floats instead of bulls. Um, and I, I talked about that in a previous video when I was trying to get the cross platform input manager uh, fixed. Fixed? It's not even fixed because it was never working. Uh, when I was trying to get it working, um, I spoke about that using the floats so that on your joystick or, or that kind of thing, yeah, you go from zero to one and you've just got a little bit more control. So I'd say at like 0.5, um, he would be walking, doing the walking animation, and then at one, he would be doing the running animation. So as it as you increase the float, uh, he smoothly goes from idle to walking to running and back down when you decrease the float. And same with the negative from zero to negative one. You'd have the same thing of walking backwards. Um, which will make sense when we get to that that video. Um, and it is definitely there because I do use it somewhere. I promise, I promise I do. So, yeah. We have, where are we at? 55 minutes. And this is all working. So walking back, walking forward, running off the screen. Um, if you're wondering where my game view is, because normally it's down here, it is over on a second monitor, uh, which was not being recorded, so I can't even show you that. Um, but for this test, I didn't need the game view. I was working pretty much with just the scene view, and I was using the bottom there for the animator components, or the animator controller. Uh, and with Unity, it's great that you can set your layouts. So I never do it. I just change the layout as, as I need it. Um, I'm going to start doing it. So you could kind of have a layout here. So you, this could be your animator layout. And then you could just kind of click this, click create new layout, and save it as an animator layout. Uh, and then you can always go back to your default. And you have one setup for uh, visual effects that might have the visual effects graph down here, and one for you know, game window, so it has this and the game window together, so you can test the two. Um, so you can just set up loads of different layouts for your different uh, work pipeline -y things, and then switch between them as necessary. Um, okay, so that is basically it. So we're gonna end the video here, folks. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and maybe learn something um, about it because that's what we're here for we're here to learn um yeah so if you like the video hit the like button uh share the video with anyone you think who might be interested in this kind of content and please consider subscribing and encouraging other people to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification icon so that you can be kept up to date of all the cool upcoming content and you won't want to miss what's coming up because i think the next series i'm gonna start is going to be my sci-fi RPG one because that has the most amount of videos in it so it'll take me the longest to get through so I can and I, can't, I really want to get into it so I think that's what we're going to do next so stay tuned for that uh, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss out on it it's going to be pretty awesome it's going to be pretty cool I'm really excited for it I hope you are too thank you very much guys and I will see you all next time